Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algy, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. All righty. Welcome to episode 17 of the Ages of Rock podcast. It's the (laughs) Ages of Rock podcast. Sure it is. Anyway, (laughs) this is going to be another one of those weeks. But anyway, tonight uh, our topic is building the perfect super group. But before we get into that, you may notice that we have an extra person sitting in tonight. This person here is, say hello to Miss Amy Dingman. Hello, everyone. Thank a little background, hey, on, little background on Amy. Uh, she works with my wife. Um, they've been working together for a long time. And I've known Amy for quite a long time. I know my wife came home one day. She says, there's this girl I work with. And she's a drummer, and she she likes rock music and all the same crap you do. You got to meet her sometime and whatever. So if I'm not mistaken, it was a Christmas party. Yeah. We're sitting at a big table, and we started talking. I don't think we shut up the whole night talking <laughs> about music. So we plan on later after that, you know, at some point get together, and she was going to come over and play. I had a drum set at the house, and actually from those couple of sessions that she came over. Uh, three demos that I have recorded over time have Amy on the drums. And if you've ever listened to the show, the intro and the outro, she is the drummer on those on that song. So there you go. Amy, like I said, if you'd like to tell us a little bit more about your likes, dislikes, your rock and roll history. Well, I, uh, I've always liked rock music ever since I can remember. I mean, I always listen to any type of music as long as the song's gro- uh, good and it's got a good groove to it you know i i'll listen to just about anything from classical to rock to you know just to anything about except jazz i'm really not much of a jazz fan but um i've always listened to uh to rock um metal ever since i can remember even when i was young that's what i remember listening and i'm not sure where it really came from because my other than digging through my dad's old records, you know, Led Zeppelin, Sabbath, you know, that type of thing that he had. Um, Neither one of my parents really were into that kind of music. So it's just kind of funny that my brother and I fell into that, but I've always loved it. I've always had a a love for drumming. And I think that's kind of maybe where it led into it, just because, you know, that's where I found my niche, you know, when it came to this kind of music I like to play and and listen to. So, you know, mainly it's it's hard rock. Um, I'd say probably 70s and 80s. Um, and then, of course, you know, metal and hair band air and all that. That's, I was I was born 10, 10 years later than I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been in my heyday in the, in the late 80s, but I wasn't. So, you know. Oh, neither were we. we, we you guys weren't, <laughs> we weren't. That wasn't our heyday. No, 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 no. Of course not. No, no Alan, <laughs> Alan, I think that was Alan's heyday. But Dennis and I, we were, yeah, we weren't born yet. <laughs> we even, so yeah, so young. I know. I was, Just little <laughs> lads. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that that that's my history. There's not a whole lot to it. I just you know I enjoy good music and and talking about it and listen to it and listen to new stuff. So right. The I'm one question I did have for you though, it was it was it was kind of it's kind I think it's interesting, is the fact that that we're all Kiss fans and you're not and you're included because like I said, you you and your brother you got a fairly decent Kiss collection. He's got the new Kiss pinball machine. <laughs> it's guys, we got we got to go yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you, awesome. but you came into Kiss though. In what year? In what era? I mean, you came in during the, like, out of makeup in the Eric Carr years, right? Yeah, we, Brett, my brother, and I got into Kiss probably, I'd say I, maybe before they released Revenge. It it was in the late 80s, early 90s that we really started listening to them. But Brett and I never started listening to them at at their current album release. So when we got into Kiss, we started with... Kiss and then Hotter Than Hell and Dressed to Kill and we went we listened to it chronologically, right? And then huh. and that's just how we did it. And then you know I got ended up getting Revenge and all that later and and, and loved that stuff too. But no, we we loved Kiss and makeup, right? And and that's always what we listened to. You know we loved Dressed to Kill. We could put that album on repeat and just sit right. there and listen to it. Right. 
Uh, I love Dynasty. I like, you know, just odd things. We we like the Elder. It was just, you know, it was just something right. different. <laughs> but I, I like the Elder. Sorry. I, so, I, I do. I like some of the songs. I can't say that I liked all of them, but it was something right. different. It, it was, was something, something different, different exactly. And, and you know, for that for that time, it was just interesting to think, you know, where are they going with this? But you know, you listen to their albums in order, and you, and you and you realize how how they you know how they came over the years. But uh, I, I would say that's pretty much where we focus most of our attention to and I think it was one of his friends that that lent him um one of the albums that had their faces and makeup on the front I don't know if it was the the first album or what have you but anyway he's like oh that looks cool you know these guys let's give them a listen and that's all she wrote and that was so it being the fact that you got in like I said toward the right before you know, like like revenge Mm -hmm. But you didn't start out listening to that music. You listened mm -hmm. to the beginning. Because that's what I was at. I was curious that's about. Because, cool. you know, as much as we've talked about shit, I've never asked you that. <laughs> because, you know, if I would have came in on Kiss and not knew anything about them and right. started out with, say, Hot in the Shade, I've been like, I probably would have never got into them. I would have. <laughs> it, it's, so, it's so much you know, different. And I, and I think, you know, I think part of the reason why we, why we might have done that, and, and I'm just trying to, trying to guesstimate here, just because at the time, Right. We were listening to my dad's records. We did have, you know, Led Zepp one, two, and three. Play. You know, right. we had the Black Sabbath going. You know, the Steppenwolf going. And I mean, we were listening to stuff on on vinyl. You know, that's it wasn't like we were listening to anything else. We had a true record player, and and we loved the albums. I mean, that's that's where our Kiss collection started. Right. Is we didn't want the CDs and in the. In the, in the tapes, we wanted the the vinyl. To give us the LPs. We want to see the you know the lyrics on the sleeve and the cool posters and stuff that came with it. <laughs> you so. Bill said they're going yes. <laughs> so oh. that, that that I mean that's where it came from. It, it just, it, it's not the same, you know, to sit there and open, you know, peel that cellophane off that you know that record, and then and then there it is and. It's so. like I just told, I told my like wife a religious just, event. It is to getting yeah. a new album. I know. She's like, <laughs> I told my wife the other day because I I hooked my stereo back up and started listening to some vinyl again and I was playing a live two the other day and I said you know what sucks about MP3s and all that stuff you don't get this and I opened up that alive two yeah. you know the center of alive two that yeah. is awesome that, nothing, that is just yeah. awesome there's nothing and you don't get that eight. in you just virtual open, just folds open it's awesome yeah. cool actually I, I, th I hadn't I had thought I lost this but I just found this the other day. Yeah, it's really picture disc. I didn't even know I still had it yet, and so it's that's probably worth something. Yeah, I think it's a little warped though. Yeah, the picture, the picture disc. I think if you have a real good one, it's um, it's about thirty thirty five dollars. Oh, really? So I've got a price guide back here, but yeah, I've got a whole <laughs> box of my albums. They're actually in the closet next to me here, right. but yeah. There you go. So anyway, well, that's yeah. why I said so I had never asked you that, and I was kind of curious about why, because I was I was like going, why does she? I know she's into it, but. If if, it, yeah. if she came in in that era, how in the hell did you stay with them? Yeah, I, no, I went, yeah. Went, okay. we, we, we started from the beginning and, and went from there and just, you know, progress with them. Just cool. obviously we didn't have to wait a year or two between albums. We just bought one and went to the next and to the next. But yeah. yeah well, if you got into them in 74, you wouldn't have to wait a year either because they're putting them out about every three <laughs> every months. months. Oh, every time you go to the store, it was like, like hey, there's a new Kiss album. <laughs> That's right. I loved that too. It was awesome. So, I mean, so what is your, so what, then what is your favorite album or, and or favorite era since you've listened go. to all of them? Oh gosh. Um, I'd say my favorite, my favorite era of them is going to be a tie between the dress to kill kind of dress to kill the love gun era right and then um i really i really like the creatures of the night to asylum too i know that's kind of a big gap there because you know you're going through what three three four guitar players there during during that time but you know it's um I just there was something different about all of it because I, again i like the 80s hair bands type stuff so when they kicked in some of those you know those songs off of like tears are Fallen and and stuff like that off of a off of asylum you know i like that but i mean if i had to pick my absolute favorite is probably dress <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> oh Sorry. you know the videos well yeah, yeah. but no i mean Dr dress to kill i mean that album from beginning to end there there's hardly a bad song on that that's, i don't even know if i would favorite. if i would say it was a bad song I mean, I could pick out songs that were on other albums that were great. You know, I love Parasite. I love some songs um, um, off of a Dynasty and everything. But for the full album, 
to say that I like the whole thing. It would have to be Dressed to Kill. I agree. I yeah, just, that's the first album I put on after I got my stereo put back. I mean, my my turntable hooked back up. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that was they they did it right there. They they really it was almost kind of like a an I don't want to say like a concept album. Kind of like it was an opus. You know, it's like the beginning to end, everything just flowed. The yeah. the, the tempos of the songs and everything. They they did it right and then. Cool. Awesome. A- Alan doesn't know what vinyl is. I think he's too young. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's not a vinyl guy. He's not a vinyl yeah, guy at all. Which is we cool. Actually... It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's going to dig one out now. <laughs> but he, but we, we've been talking about it. And he's like, yeah, vinyl. Yeah, look, I have he's got some. Some of the originals. Yeah, there you go. So he's got some. He's got yeah, some. Originals, Alan, that's the, that's the one album I did not get. Well, the funny story about the funny story about me getting the originals is uh, a guy that I grew up with was also a fellow Kiss fan, you know, and he asked me for my address one day, and he was like, "I'm going to send you something," and I was like, "Okay," you know, and he sent me a bunch of old scratched up. <laughs> the originals are all scratched and beat all to hell. The dress to kill is beat all to hell. The Kiss is beat all to hell. Destroyers beat all to hell. <laughs> It's destroyed. <laughs> I, guess he, I, guess, I guess, you know, he's kind of like, it's, is it sacrilege to throw that away or something? <laughs> you got to keep yes. that stuff. Is. That is. Yeah, you can't throw it's it away. It's like that and burning the flag. Well, <laughs> that that is in such bad shape about all I would do to it is nail it to the wall behind me. <laughs> there you go. Well, my actual Destroyer album and my Creatures album are right there. <laughs> awesome. So I was, and I was actually looking for them the other day, and I was like, what, what happened where, to where those? Where did I put them? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're hanging on the wall. <laughs> That's great. All right. Oh, well. All right. You want to get this thing rolling? Want to get Let's it go. Chugging? All righty. So, anyway, we've thought about how we're going to do this. Uh, there again, nobody has talked to anybody. It's all been kept in a vault all week long, all of our, our thoughts and our what we've thought about. <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> it is a stretch. It's in a steel trap up here. It's rusty there you shut. go, steel trap. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, and I guess the way we decided to do it is we're going to go and talk. Each person is going to tell our super group. Basically, our super group has to have a drummer, bass player, two guitar players, or guitar player, keyboard, whatever you want to do, and a front man slash singer, or it could be a guitar so, player. So five members. Five people, five members. That's what we're going to do. So we're all going to tell each other or everybody what our group consists of, and then we're going to go back and talk about each one as we go through. We'll go drummer to bass to guitar and all that stuff. Who wants to go first? You. No, I'm not going to go first. I'm going to go last. You should let our special guest go last. There you go. Amy. <laughs> oh, last. <laughs> all right. You want me to go first? Dennis yeah. isn't used to being the host because he just – <laughs> Spotify. <laughs> age before beauty. I haven't said it yet. I haven't age said before beauty. Difference. Bam. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I am the oldest guy here. He all righty. It's all right. Let me pull up my notes here because I got them officially here. All right. My super group consists of, and I'm going to go backwards, forwards. On drums, Eric Singer. On bass, Jack Blades. On rhythm, rhythm guitar, you've got Dave Grohl. Lead guitar, Doug Dave Aldrich. <laughs> no, Doug Aldrich. <laughs> and on sing, and your singer's going to be Miles Kennedy. That's my super group. <laughs> Shit. That's, that's a super group. All right. That, that's, that's a pretty, Alan, good, that's pretty Alan, good group, yeah. Once you, once you that's throw. pretty good, man. All well, right. Dave Grohl's in there, though. <laughs> right. But I have a... There, I that's have a... Given. I have a whole reason for all this stuff, and I'll tell you that here in a little bit. Well, don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly. No, just randomly pick some people. Just, you know, no. It came out of a hat. Nobody else has a reason. <laughs> pulled him out of a hat. I had it wasn't people. his hat he pulled him out of. <laughs> it was his ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, had a, I had that top hat back here that kind of looks like Slash's top hat. You know, I'm sure Alan's was kind of like a straw kind of. Shape Mine's a <laughs> hat. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right, Alan. Oh Amy's my gosh. Perfect. Anyway, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> For my drummer, I picked Questlove from the Roots slash uh, Jimmy Fallon oh. show. Yeah. Uh, For my bass player, I picked John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. Okay. Uh, one of my guitar players is Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. 
The other guitar player is Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac. And my singer is Ann Wilson from Heart. Oh, wow. wow. That's, a That's good cool. Thing. So you That's blew my – okay, go ahead. I was going to do wow. something for a little bit. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I got to go next, right? Because we're going to save best the, for last. That must be his uh, sucky super group or something. No. <laughs> No, that's cool, man. That's that awesome. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, this is gonna be funny. Okay. My drummer, yeah, Eric Singer. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Bill's gonna be like co co managers of this. <laughs> <laughs> My bass player, yeah. Jeff Tilson. Oh, good there one. You go. Um, guitar players, I pick Slash and Brian May. I almost pick Slash. All right. And my singer. I actually have a check mark by Miles Kennedy, but really? that's not what I'm going to use. <laughs> I swear. To, I swear. Awesome. Um, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Paul Stanley because I think he's a phenomenal front man and not his singing voice today, but his singing voice, you know, back in the day. Right. But as a from a front man, I think is phenomenal. Oh, so, yeah. I can't you can't you can't yeah. argue that point. All right, Amy. OK, bring it well, on. I. uh I had a couple super groups, you know, picked out just because I, you know, had one kind of for different genres. But I'm going to go with my kind of heavy metal genre because uh, my other super group, Eric Singer, was my drummer. So I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to. I'm going to. Be... But you know what does that say? <laughs> that's awesome though, because think about what does that say about Eric Singer? I mean, we're yeah. going to get into that in a minute, but really, that's pretty cool. He he really pretty... can. But this one, um, this one's going to be pretty heavy. So so bear with me here. Uh, for my drummer, uh, Chris Sadler. Um, for my bassist, uh, I did uh, Rob uh, Trujillo. Ooh, okay. My two guitarists, uh, John Five and Gus G. And then my singer, Matt Barlow. Right on. Wow. That is, that's a different <laughs> genre. <laughs> it, it, it is. And, you know, it is, it's more what I listen to. But, you know, I, I had so many people listed that it was hard. It was hard to choose. This was a lot harder than I thought it was. And, you know, some of these people, you know, you go to pick, and I figure they are already in super groups. So I was trying to right. do something, yeah. a little, you know, a little, a little bit different. But well, you're, real quick, since you're a guest, your group that started out with Eric Singer, what, what was, who was in that group? Just, just for shits and giggles. Uh, Billy Sheehan on bass, yeah. George Lynch on guitar. I only had one guitarist in this group. <laughs> all right. And, you don't uh, need anybody else. That's <laughs> right. George, George takes care of it all. <laughs> then, um, Jeff Scott Soto for hmm. singing. Right. Awesome. So that's cool. Yeah, there George is a great guitar player, and I he was on my list too. Uh, he's probably on the list of people that can't get along. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he'd be better in a solo. <laughs> You'd be surprised who I, they call it lynch mob. <laughs> yeah. Like I said at the very end of this, I had that I had my shit group set up, and basically my rules on my shit group because I'm the only one that did it because I didn't tell you guys about it. But my 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 rules on that were they had to be great great musicians or singers. But they have to. They don't get along with people. And somebody, one of you guys, picked one of those guys that was in, one of the guitar players. I almost put in, and I'll I'll mention it here. Yeah, a little that's bit. cool. But anyway, all right. So, so we're gonna run we through about? real quick. We're gonna run through the drummers. Like I said, uh, you want me to? You who wants to go first on that? You want me to go first since we did it same order? Sure. sure. Okay. All right, Eric Singer. Okay, real quick. On my on my super group, they had this is my credentials to, to get it into my super group. Number one, you had to be a fantastic artist. Period. I mean, that's that's no hands down. Number two, versatility. You had to be a good musician. Plus, you had to either be a lead vocalist or a hell of a backup singer. And and then the third one was you have to be a person that can get along. You're known as a good guy. You know, in the circles, you're you're looked up to by your peers as a as a professional. Not somebody's going to start any crap, you know. Somebody you're not going to have to worry about, you know. We could name those names all day long. So anyway, Eric Singer fits that. I mean, that's what's one. He is. A, he's a super nice guy, and the dude has played with. I, I went back through this list. <laughs> Just everybody. Everybody. Why don't you list you know, the bands he was not ever played with? He has that been on <laughs> seven. He has played on seventy five albums. Yeah. That tells you anything. I mean, he's been in Black Sabbath. He's been. You know, he's been Alice. I've seen him play with Alice Cooper. They've seen him in town. I mean, he's just, and he goes from one band, and as soon as he's done with Kiss, you know, he's on the road again with whoever else wants to hire him. I mean, the, the dude's just, and in, in the, he's a hell of a backup singer. I mean, you can't go wrong with Eric. That's That was why I picked him. 
I'll just say yes. Did <laughs> I mean that's, that's that was that was my criteria. Was yeah. my criteria was very much similar to yours. It had to be somebody that was versatile because I think that band should be able to play a lot of different stuff. Sure. And I, I, I mean that's he, he is, and I think he has that ability to play very heavy. And sure. I like it when he plays that. That revenge to me was just badass i love that album and then you have the other side where he can play the stuff from the you know from wherever alice cooper and you know the, the everybody else he plays with so I, that I, that's exactly why i picked played it in a video exactly. on a recording of olivia newton john if that tells you anything yeah i mean i, that, <laughs> I, mean, I, he, everybody. For I mean he's, he's, he's great he is good so and, like, and he seems like a good guy and I, you know when I, we've met him a couple times and he's been very polite very nice not conceited stuck up in an arrogant dick so that's that you know is is a good thing so he's a fan i think too he's a fan yeah he is yeah he is. i think that yeah. makes a difference it makes yeah. a huge difference all right alan well since i'm the only one that didn't pick eric singer <laughs> <laughs> um the reason that i picked quest love is because he one is a very good drummer two he is versatile because when you watch i don't know yeah. if any of you guys watch the tonight show mm -hmm. but you know They've had Ace Frehley on there. They've had uh, Bruce Springsteen on there. It doesn't matter who they have on there. He can hang with them. Sure. Mm -hmm. And he is also a very good backup singer. Awesome. I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard him sing a lead, but right. I bet he could pull it off. Exactly. And he has a – and he, he's got – he just has that – I don't know, that – this. he's just got a different beat, and he makes a, the groove. Yeah, he groove. just – and he takes songs, and he makes them sound a little bit different, but – Still pretty true, but just a little bit of a twist. I I, I agree. He's right. really good. I didn't know that guy's name, but yeah. I watched I the show. And I was like, name. I like that guy. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you know a lot of those guys from those shows like that though are are really good drummers. You know Anton Fig. You know played with Letterman for years, and he he's yeah. played with a, a shit gob of people. Yeah, I mean, but you like you said, they have to be versatile. I mean, you you're the backup band for basically every every musician or every singer that comes on there. So you're going to have to be able to play yep. all types of music, but no good pick. Good pick. So Amy, why'd you pick Eric? Um, <laughs> well, I, pick, no, I, I, picked, I picked Eric for that other band. That's why I didn't go through that one, but yeah, for the same reasons you guys said, but um, when I was thinking of more of, of my, my metal type band, um, at first I was going to go with Mike Portnoy because I mean, right. He's Mike Portnoy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> He's from fine. a drumming, from a drummer standpoint, there's just, I mean, there's just nothing you can say about that guy. He, what he does is so incredibly difficult and he does it with seemingly just at ease, kind of like Neil Peart from Rush. But right. the, the reason I like Chris Adler and the reason I picked him is because when I listen to him and I'm not a huge Lamb of God fan, but when I hear those tracks where they, people have mixed with just isolated drums where I can just listen to him, you know, nothing else or whatever, just drums and bass, the man sounds like a drum track. He just does not make mistakes. He is so clear and crisp and concise and his footwork is just, I, it's just, it's enviable for anybody, I think, who, who plays drums. So um, he has, you know, enough versatility to where he can, you know, the, the sound of the band would, you know, could go a, a lot of different ways. He just did. I think he was the one that set in on Megadeth's last album, uh, Dystopia or whatever. He did the he did the drumming for the session of that. But uh, he's just uh, he's just phenomenal. I mean, I just cannot get over how good he is. And so I figured if I was going for for metal, I wanted somebody who's going to pound the drums and give that that double bass line. And, and, and he's the one to do it. So that's why he got my vote. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Great. There's a lot of good drummers. It was hard to kind of get is. it narrowed Very down. Mm -hmm. What did, who, did, who else did anybody write down? Did anybody else write anything? Because I wrote a couple. Other I wrote ones down. five people down. Okay, yeah. who, else, who else did you write down? No, I mean for my whole super group. Oh, you just no, wrote five people. Did you write any other drummers or anything? You just went with that. No, but I have other drummers that I could throw in there. Mike Portnoy was one that. Yeah, I like. He him. was one <laughs> of the initial ones that popped into my head. He's already in like six super groups, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's Mike Wingren from, yeah. from Disturb. There's Mike Mangini, who's in Dream Theater now. Jeremy Spencer from Five Finger Death Punch. Um, of course, Eric Singer. Mike, I mean, you, you could go on and on. There's just so many. There's a lot of good drummers. So many good drummers. 
Dave Grohl. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah that's right, Dave Grohl. Have you heard of him? He's awesome. He has a good. Yeah, name. I wrote down Eric Carr. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think Eric Carr would have been a you know was really good at, at the time and would have just continued on and been phenomenal. But uh, well, it'd been I, interesting I, to see I, what happened. He was one that I considered, you know, and then there were other people that I considered for the super group too. But I decided that I wanted to pick people in the super group that were still living. That way, yeah, and that's when they watch our too. podcast, we get credit for creating a super group. Right. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Brian Tishy was somebody else I wrote down who's played with yeah. a lot of people, and I, I like him. Awesome. And I'm going to give some props to the foo. There you go. <laughs> Taylor Hawkins. I think Taylor Hawkins Taylor, is a drummer, and he's Taylor a great Hawkins. singer, and he just has looks like he's having a blast. So. Yeah, and he's a good guy. The, guys I wrote down. Awesome guy. So. Awesome. All right. All right. What's up next there, to the four Dennis? Stringers. The four stringers. Four the stringers. The losers. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to tell you, Amy also is a bass player and a guitar player. So. Oh, no, 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 no. Not a player. You you, you, you dabble. How's that? I, okay. I'll dabble in those. She started dabbling four string first. So, you know, and then she realized that she didn't want to bring I knew I liked there. her for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a bass. Drums too. without the bass. I know. And I got a bass too, so I can't say nothing. But anyway, so like I said, I didn't. I was thinking about some other bass players, but I, man, Jack Blades, you know, there again, he's been in a ton of super groups. But the thing is, the guy is a great bass player and he is a great singer, you know, songwriter, singer, and you just can't go wrong with that. And the other thing that I put on that my other, the other stipulation on this thing is you have to have a stage presence. You got to. You know, I don't want some because you see these some of these bass players. They just you know just sit you know just stand there. You know, don't do that. All these guys that I picked in this band are showmen. I mean, they get out there, they move around, get the crowd going. That's and and Jack's one of those guys. I mean, he you know, he fronted basically you know uh, uh, Night Ranger. You know, and you know, but he's played with Ringo and his All Star Band. He you know, he played in uh, Damn Yankees. You know, in Shaw Blades. I mean, he's done a ton of shit. Anyway, that's why I picked him. Who's the Judas Priest bass player? Because that dude, <laughs> he, he just never sits moved. in the back oh, by the amps no. and just sitting. He, he never moves. What's his name? Uh, <laughs> that's all he does. He all can't he make in one direction. He just never he, moves. He, I'm he, like, he, like, I don't even think he's dude. alive. I think he's got like a cutout. And he's just, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Steve Harris. You know, Steve Harris is all over the place. You know, he's, oh, yeah. he's gunning you down doing this shit. You know, <laughs> yeah, the other dude, he stands in that one corner back there and just. <laughs> and there's that. Then there's that one bass player that spits fire and flies yeah. in the air and <laughs> Has a gets time. blood and does some other stuff. But he doesn't do anything either. <laughs> He's in another band that I super group that I'm going to talk about later. <laughs> but anyway, all right, Alan. The reason I picked John Paul Jones is because um, he's a pretty good songwriter. Exactly, he's a pretty good bass player, and I think he really never got the recognition as one of the members of Led Zeppelin that he really deserved. Right. And I I think that he wrote a lot more of that material than he gets credit for. I'm sure he probably did. You know, I was looking today, I looked at I was looking at just various lists of who all was on what list. He is on every list. I I noticed that myself. Probably top 10 in every list yeah. that I saw of of you know, best bass players of all time. I I thought that was pretty cool. I he think did one, one of the mo one of my most favorite John Paul Jones moments was uh, it might have been when they got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, after Coverdale Plant did their thing, right? Or not Coverdale Plant, uh, Page Plant did their thing. Then they went to the Hall of Fame ceremony, and he's like, uh, "Guys, don't forget my phone number next time." <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he basically gave them shit in front of everyone. That's for, funny not having him as part of that project right when they did a whole lot of zeppelin songs yeah <clears throat> but uh no he he was just in that crooked vultures too and that was a cool little thing and uh but no yeah it was a good pick awesome all right Billy? i picked i picked jeff pilson um because he was I think actually on my list he was he was close to get because I think Jeff is a phenomenal. I think he's a great bass player. I think he's a phenomenal writer. I think he's involved in so many fingers. He has his fingers and stuff in so many different things in music that he has. He is in touch with 
right. a lot of different things going on in the industry, and I think that brings something to the game. I think his songwriting is really, really, really strong. Probably one of the, of the strongest, you know, of, of bass players that are out there. So for me, and and he does great back background vocals, and and he does leads. good leads, he does great leads too. So I lead I like Jeff. I like Jeff as a person too. The interviews I've heard from him, with him and stuff like that, he always seems like a really cool guy. So somebody I'd really like to meet sometime. I He's have personal, I've seen him in Foreigner, and he has stage presence. He definitely has <laughs> stage presence. <laughs> yep. I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad because it doesn't bother me, but I've got one friend that saw Foreigner, and that's all he could do the whole night was bitch about Pilsen moving around like that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he does move, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but they had that project that they did, the guys from Dockin' without um, Don, Mm-hmm. Here a while back, I can't remember. Yep. They, they they redid some of the Dawkins songs. I with think Jesse. they ended up calling it Tooth and Nail. Yeah, it's yeah, but they, but they had a but anyway, they did some new songs, and Jeff yep. sang all the songs on there. And Jeff's got a really good voice, actually. Yep. It's surprising. I mean, actually, actually, he sounds better than Don does now. If 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 that tells you anything, because Don. Yeah, I saw a live thing from them, and as much as I'm excited about them getting back together, Don's high um, end is gone. Don, I mean, completely. Don gone. doesn't have a high end. His high no. end is this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. And Jeff you know, can just, see yeah. hat, so as long as you know that going in, different. Mm-hmm. that he can't hit those notes anymore. You know that I watched a rendition, I think not too long ago, of him trying to sing alone again, oh, and uh, it, it all every time he he was supposed to have a higher note on that song, he had to go lower, and it just kind of changed the the composition of the song too much to where it's it almost a, it's almost a different song. It's yeah, a completely yeah. different song. It has a different yeah. feel to it. You know exactly. But he's got to do what he's going to do. He's, he can't sing. <laughs> he's going to go for it. Ah, he choke on everything. Lord song. knows I wouldn't be able to do it anyway. So. Yep. Awesome. And What was your pick, Amy? Amy? Um, oh. For a bass player, I picked uh, Rob Trujillo from mm-hmm. Metallica right now. But, of course, he's played in Suicidal Tendencies and played with Ozzy and played with Jerry Cantrell on his solo albums. And, and um, I just love the guy. You know, he, he, he can- needs shoes, though. Doesn't he always play barefoot? Well, no, he doesn't. No, <laughs> but he doesn't. He's a pig. He 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 finger picks most of it. I was it, thinking but... he was always barefoot too. Maybe. No, 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 not the one, not in the ones I've seen. But that I know he's always slow and he slings that thing he, low. He slings he's down. Like... He crawls. But he, yeah, he's all over that stage. But yeah. he, uh, I, I just love the sound. It, you know, when I listen to any album he's played on, I mean, you can listen to that. and It's like, yep, yeah, that's who that is on bass and it's just kind of it's just crunchy enough and dirty enough to to have a good uh, to have a good sound to it um kind of like rex brown from pantera i really like his playing too but again it's loud and it's crunchy and uh but uh yeah rob i just like all the work he's done he's worked with several people and played you know still in the in the rock genre but enough different bands to where uh, i think he's pretty versatile i just don't know much about any songwriting experience as far as that i don't know that much about him but um you know, for a bass player, I really, I really like him. So that's what I went with. Awesome, awesome. All right, we're getting into guitar number one. I'm not even going to say lead or, or rhythm, whichever one you wanted to do. And of course, I'm going to say for rhythm. But, but anyway, Dave Girl was my pick for that. And reason being, another deal was, you know, he's a singer, he's a songwriter, he plays a hell of guitar. His actually his lead guitar playing is getting a lot better over the years. Um. He could also play drums, fill in if they wanted to do a two drum little, you know, thing during the salt instead of make it make it a little bit, you know, a little bit funner or, or sound different, whatever. He's just versatile, and he gets up and moves. You know, I, I, that's enough. I don't even have to talk to him. <laughs> I think they know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's it. You knew that was coming. No. I, thought for sure was, I thought for sure it was going to be the Dave Grohl hour. Oh, wow! I only got one person in there. I thought we were going. I thought we were going an hour and forty minutes on just Dave Grohl. <laughs> you know, I picked him. I mean, he's, that's, that, to me, that's a gimme. Anyway, Alan. Well, one of my guitar picks was uh, Lindsey Buckingham because he is a phenomenal guitar player. He is a phenomenal songwriter. And he's a phenomenal singer, and right. I believe that he could probably do some pretty good backing vocals as well. Oh, I'll guarantee it. Yeah, he's good. My guitar player was Slash. <clears throat> oh yeah, one of them was Slash, and just because it's he is, um, I think he re- re- kind of redefined what a lead guitar player was in the '80s. Oh, exactly. I mean, I think it just he just really kind of took it to a different level. 
um, technique wise and, 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 uh, songwriting wise, I think it just really kind of changed things a little bit. Um, and probably maybe wasn't as noticeable in the eighties because of all the bands that came out all around the same time. But I think from a longevity perspective, right. he's hung around and that's because you're good. You know, you don't get to be, you don't get to hang around if you're not very good. So right. that's why I pick slash. So, do you know real quick why I think what, what I think makes slash so cool to us. And I, I, I do. I like slash a lot. Also, I think he is what we wish Ace, Ace Frilly would have got to be because, you know, He's not a he's not one of those, you know, lightning fast players. He's not one of the ones playing a million notes a mile. Everything's kind of melodic. It's it's just it's a good rock solid thing. You know, Ace started out sounding like that, but he never grew any far. You know, he's he's playing the same sloppy shit he did in seventy four. He's playing now. Just he's a little chubbier and <laughs> And I tell you what, I see the video of hey, he's there's there's two hundred pounds of that five hundred I was talking about. Today. <laughs> I think My you're God, right, dude. <laughs> it's, it's huge. But anyway, you know what I'm saying though. Sl- Slash sounds like what Ace Frehley should have got to be. To me, that's that's what I think. He's just got that style. You know, it's not. You don't have to play a million notes. Play ten notes that really sound good and fit together. You know, that's always what I've been. So. And yeah. I actually had them together at oh. first. Right, as the two guitar players, just because it was just there, the the styles were similar but it contrasted. It would have been that would be cool just, to hear that. But I, I just don't think. I mean, yeah, but yeah. Okay. Amy. Okay. Um, when I was thinking about guitar writers, I <laughs> or guitarists, I was thinking about songwriting too. And the first person that actually came to my mind was Tom Schultz from um, from Boston because I absolutely love his his right. songwriting style and everything. But of course, with the the band I was thinking and he wouldn't fit so much into the <laughs> to the metal genre as much. So with that being said, I picked John Five. Um I think he's an absolutely fantastic guitar player. Uh didn't listen to him that much when he was with Marilyn Manson, but man, when he jumped on board with Rob Zombie, he had me. I mean, the thing that I think I like best about him, not not so much that again, if you listen, if you go onto iTunes and listen to his solo stuff. I mean, just technical ability, the guy hands down, it, it, it's hard to beat him. But he is a riff master. Mm. He, he kind of, kind of, I, I hate to say it, but kind of in the same vein as, it, it, you know, as Iomi, because you get somebody that can make these riffs that just, you know, you get four or five chords and you think it would be so simple to get something catchy like that, but... He's done that with a lot of stuff. You got to admit, even with Manson, you know, not a lot of people, had, you know, listen to that band necessarily. Get, didn't get as mainstream as some of the other rock bands, but um, it, his his riffs are undeniable. You can still turn on a song and, and know what it is when it starts to open up. And he did the same thing for Rob Zombie. I mean, Rob Zombie had some great songs, but <laughs> when John, I, I, when he was playing for him, I just... I love it. I mean, he he really can think of some cool stuff, and that's all part of what I like to listen to. So, I went with him for that. I saw him uh, playing with Zombie at Rocklahoma a few years ago. Yeah, and he he has an interesting stage presence. It is because it's, he it's does not... when he's playing, he doesn't really move around a lot. No, he doesn't. He, he doesn't walk around, but he moves around. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. He he's he's a little tree like. And, and he's kind of got this weird. I think he still has has kind of. I don't want to say like ghostly appearance, but that, it, uh, that's a, a good description. You know, a, a little bit about it, but yeah. That when I saw him live last, it was back in um, Ozfest up at Indy, and I want to say that was probably probably ten years ago. That's when he was out there playing with Zombie, and man, it was just he killed it. I mean, they they all, they all did a good job, but I mean, he just. It's, it's some good looks that he has, so it's it's awesome. He had everybody going. It's 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 interesting too how his name will pop up from other people. I know I've read interviews and stuff, and people collaborating, and all of a sudden they'll talk about John Five, and it'll be somebody in a complete different genre. But I guess he's into he he's into just, all kinds of stuff. He can you know? play he just, anything. He just collaborated with David Lee Roth, didn't he? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. I, I believe yeah. so. 
Well, you know, you get on, um, I just downloaded a couple of his uh, solo songs not too long ago on iTunes, and I knew he he played some different stuff, but if you listen to any one of his solo albums from, from front to back, you'll get right. some, like, a uh, like country twang. That's what he does at like country rag, yeah, like he, chicken pickings, what I call yeah, it. That, he, he does he's that. He's big into that, and he, he does it he real does that. well. He does steel guitar. He'll do some country, and then he'll get in there, and he'll have like a almost like a flamenco classical right. thing going in the in the guy, and you're and you're thinking this has got to be two and three guitars going at once. No, no, it's not. Watch the videos. It's it's right. him one guitar, and it's like. The sounds he makes come out of that. It's just amazing. It's crazy. He's like a magical. He's like a little magician with it. But huh. anyway, it's pretty That's cool. Awesome. All righty. Getting back to it. My, my thing went down here. Okay. So anyway, on lead guitar, I went with Doug Aldridge. And I don't know a lot about the guy. Only thing I know is, is he's played with everybody. And whenever he plays with anybody, he is a monster with playing. I mean, I, I seen him playing here a while back on a TV show. And his fingers have got to be at least this long. <laughs> he's, he plays that neck, dude, and he's just like, he doesn't even try. But I've got a video of him with playing with Dio. And, I mean, he's playing him those old Vivian licks, just, I mean, just tearing them up. You know, and then he goes into Whitesnake. You know, he's playing everything that he does there. He he did that Rock of Ages uh, uh, stage show in Vegas, played that for a long time. He was the lead guitar player in that for for a hell of a long time. But uh, and now, like I said, he's playing with um, what well, you said. Um, damn it! Um, getting ready to record with um, Dead Daisies. Dead Daisies, yeah. Hey, do you mean do you mean rating the Rock Vault? That's the show in Vegas. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that the one it yeah. was? I'm yeah, sorry. I saw that show. I, I, I went to that show and he was really. It was really. Oh, he good. was actually playing in that then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It so, was him, oh. and it was the um, the band leader was the guy from Heart. Um, okay. His last name's Hartman. No, I don't think that's right. Anyway, he was the um, they they had right. that that show was worth the money. I'm sorry, um, yeah, you're right. I, I I don't know why I was thinking. Of no, it's okay. Um, it was, it, <laughs> that's a really good show. He was really good. Right, that'd have been a good. Well, show if, to see. if Bill didn't correct you, I know another Bill that would have. Yeah, exactly. I did homework. <laughs> <laughs> so I, don't, I, so don't I knew what mail. the show was. I just I don't know why I was thinking that, but. But yeah, no, like I said, he's been, I don't know about his vocal abilities or anything, but I've also seen some interviews with him and I've heard other people talk about him. He's a great guy. I know he's he's super easy to get on. He wouldn't be in and out, you know, working for all these bands. I mean, White Snake wanted him in, you know, and he felt bad about not doing it. I think him and, him and, uh, well, D. Snyder gave him some shit about coming into these bands and all this stuff. And he was real nice about it being, you know, in it, you know, on the interviews. And I think afterwards they got things settled, but. You know, D always says something stupid. Anyway, he just tries to get his name out there. I think, but uh, anyway, I know that's that's Bill's favorite guy. <laughs> A little twisted sister. <laughs> I'm not going to give I know. any <laughs> reference to that guy. Anyway, so. so that was my so that was my pick. And the guy, nope. like I said, he's a mon <laughs> monster guitar player. So that's that's why I picked him. Good pick. My yep. other pick was Mike McCready, and uh, really the only reason that I picked him is, is there's just something about that guy, his playing, and, you know, it's like John Five. The minute you hear something come out, you know who that is playing that guitar. Right. You know, so okay. that's why. Yeah, my other pick was Brian May, and just because I think Brian is somebody that has is a really phenomenal guitar player, um, technically just super skilled. And I, I think, unfortunately, there's a lot. He has a he has so much talent that never got out because oh, no. when Queen kind of started crashing and burning because of of um, Freddie Mercury's you know illness and stuff like that, they just kind of didn't progress anymore. No. And I just, but I think the guy is just terribly talented. I like watching I like watching the videos, you know, and the concert videos, and just somebody that he just kind of plays and it it looks effortless. Right. It doesn't look like he's even really trying, and it sounds phenomenal. You know, other than that Starfleet thing that he did with Eddie Van Halen, I can't. Really? I don't think he's done anything else. I don't nope. think he's done anything besides Queen. He went to college and became an astrophysicist. Yeah, I was going to say, you know? he was too busy being a rocket scientist. He's a doctor now. <laughs> right. Here, here's, a real rocket quick, here's a real quick Queen. side question. <laughs> That's true. I got bored. Real quick side question. Rocket science. When, when Brian May passes away... If that guitar does not go into a museum, the original, the original red guitar, 
How much do you think that thing will go for at auction? Oh if my it, gosh! If it doesn't go to a, a museum, it's going to probably end up in a museum. I I would think it has. I think it'll get bought by somebody and put in a museum. But if if his family doesn't do it, I think that's what'll happen to it. That get probably by somebody. has to be the most recognizable guitar ever made. I mean, I don't care if it's you know Les Paul's first guitar he made. No, no, the red guitar. There's a book even written about it. I mean, just about that guitar. Yep. Wow. It's under armed guard all the time. It's cool because he's lost it at one time, right? Yeah. 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 You mean, know, it's... unless it was for charity, I almost hope they don't auction off his guitar at some point because, you know, when it comes time for some of that stuff, the only people that have enough money right. to, to even buy something like that, you know, they you're hard pressed to find somebody who would appreciate it much more than the common folk. <laughs> <laughs> Being it, you know, none of us could ever, you know, afford anything like that. But yeah, they do. They just need to put that somewhere where everybody can see it and enjoy it. And I think that's probably what will happen. See, put that in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, that no, guitar there, belongs in the Rock go, and Roll Hall. Then I would might even go. I might even go to the damn place just to pay homage <laughs> to it. <laughs> I'd go in there with blinders. I'd have somebody <laughs> escort me right to that <laughs> guitar, <laughs> and then I'd leave. Yeah. <laughs> show me Brian May's guitar. Yeah, show Brian May's guitar. I want to see anything else. May's guitar please and is I, it I next like to the kiss exhibit and then i'm leaving yeah, <laughs> hopefully there's an exit door right next to it so i could get out of here <laughs> but anyway so anyway sorry to sidetrack but I, I i always i thought about that the other day and i thought that's i'm curious you know I, i'd like for him to stay around forever but you know that doesn't happen anyway amy did we already go through all the second guitarists no you're on your second guitarist Oh, I didn't know it was to me yet for that. I thought, okay. <laughs> Bill, you're done with Brian, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, my second guitarist, I picked um, Gus G. And um, I didn't know a lot about this guy until I I saw a clip on YouTube, I think, for him. And and he was, um, you know, he was playing with Ozzy. And he, was, he did some kind of YouTube video about, you know, the Ozzy riffs. And... I just couldn't believe how effortlessly he was just playing everything. It was just amazing. So anyway, I got to looking, and uh, I guess his band's Firewind, and he's had a he's had several solo albums out, and um, he's just uh, I hate to use the word straightforward, but just crisp, clean, good rock and roll guitarist. I mean, can play the stuff that Randy Rhodes was playing. Just and he throws his own little you know his own little uh notes in there and everything just makes it his own it just it was phenomenal he's a pretty young guy but um right. i thought he would make a good compliment to to john five and in in, in, a, in the hard rock type metal things so that's what i went with him but I, I was really impressed with his playing so did he take over ozzy when uh see i'm trying to think who was well Has there been uh, two since because no, Zach, Zach doesn't play with Ozzy very no, much. I'm saying after Zach left, is that who came in and replaced no, Zach? Gus, I think Gus just came in just a handful of years ago. I'm trying to think who came in. Uh, Ozzy's had a couple people that's in. That's what I'm out. saying. Is there been two about two three people since Zach? Yeah, came. I think I think that's right. The last the last Ozzy album that I bought was the Black Rain one, and I know Zach played on that. Okay. And and the only other Ozzy stuff I bought after that's been the Black Sabbath get back together type albums. I haven't bought any solo stuff if he's released any. Um, but I think he's had a couple people to play with him on tour between Zach and and, and Gus. Okay. But okay. Uh, yeah, this this guy holds his own, and and to be able to play with Ozzy and play those riffs that those other guys did, and, and I think that that speaks for itself. So he got my. Is vote. he a pretty young guy? Yeah, he is. Look, look. Because I saw a picture of him, and he looks pretty young. Yeah, looks maybe mid twenties, early thirties. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I was like, he looks really young. Yeah, he is. I mean, just, you know, just kind of like a little guitar virtuoso, I guess. Like, there you go. cool. Yeah, Bill's old enough to be his dad, <laughs> grandpa. I wish. <laughs> I wish. Pay for college yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's going to be sitting out by the corner with a football helmet <laughs> just praying for somebody <laughs> to throw money in it, not a, not a guitar case. <laughs> All right. We're down to the, the 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 lead man, the singer, your front man, and I went with Miles Kennedy. And the only reason I did, the dude, he's probably one of my favorite singers over the last few years that's come out. Um, you know, he's been, you know, Alter Bridge. 
he, the number and number two, he's a hell of a guitar player. I didn't realize how good of a guitar player he was. I seen some live stuff here recently, and he's just freaking amazing. Oh, you're fine. Um, but yeah, and that, and just on top of that, he's just a super duper duper nice person. I mean, it, I've never heard anybody ever say a bad word about him. I mean, he's just always, and you see him in interviews. He's very polite. You know, he's he's just an all around good guy. And uh, got a hell of a stage presence, you know. I, I just love the guy. Can't say enough about him. He has a good sound. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. you know, you, you hear him and, and you pretty much know it's him. But yeah, it's just something, something he's about a, it. He's an effortless awesome. singer. He doesn't strain. Yeah. He doesn't try anything. He just sings, and it, it just phew, it sounds good. It does. Yeah. And he's another one of those guys that just bounced around from group to group, and exactly pretty much made an impact in everywhere he's been. Yeah. I saw him playing out at Mesker back when Creed and Fuel came and mm. he was playing, he was singing for the Mayfield Four. Mm. And I wish back then that I really paid more attention to to that group. But right. you know, that was one thing that stood out I was like, who's the Mayfield Four? And then this guy comes out. Right. And this lanky little dude and here he out he just opens his mouth and everybody's just kinda like, oh. <laughs> okay. And by the way, Evansville I'll yeah. be back with Creed after we knock their singer out. I'm gonna yeah. rename the damn group. <laughs> That's right. I mean, really, really, you know, it's his, it's his little called Alter Bridge. And it, yeah, and, and, and he and he's outshined everybody that, that played yeah. with him. But yeah, he 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 was awesome back then. So I mean, that's that's he's a natural. Yeah, he is. All right, yeah. Alan. Well, the reason that I picked Ann Wilson is because I don't know if you know it or not, but that girl can sing. She can sing. Yes, yeah, she know. can. And, and you. Screwed up my question that I was going to ask because I thought every one of you guys would pick all guys, and I was going to sp surprise you guys at the end and say, "Okay, now you got to pull, you got to replace one of them with a woman," and I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it would be. It it <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> but no, you can't go wrong with her. She's a that no. woman has never lost anything. Always. And I, I also think that uh, you know. She is as good a singer now as she ever has been. Oh, yeah, she yeah. sounds phenomenal. And um, I think that her and Lindsey Buckingham doing lead that vocal be, and backing vocal together, I I personally think that would blend really well and would just sound phenomenal. No, you're right on that. I never thought about that. Yeah, it'd be that almost like angel singing or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that woman got up that time and sang well, that that honors thing. Yes, that, that that Zeppelin honors. Honors. Yeah, Zeppelin honors. Yeah. yeah. Every one of them in tears, dude. I mean, <laughs> plants that are dying. Way to I mean, going, sound. I can't ever sing that good anymore. <laughs> but she, no, Robert Plant hasn't been able to sing that good in about, 50, about 20 years. <laughs> like, it, it hasn't she sounded that good. She has not lost time. anything, or if anything, she sounds better than she did. Yeah, her, it's just unbelievable. Her, you know, vo her vocal range is eight. oh, it's sick. It, yeah. You know, and, and and the other thing is, if you got to pick a good female guitar player, you got to pick Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> I saw I, mean, I, that... I saw an interview with Jerry Cantrell. Yeah, I did. Saw... And uh, I guess she had invited him over to come and jam. Right. Yeah. He went over there with his guitar, and he was all like, "I was going to show her how it was done." <laughs> and by the time we got done, she had my fingers bleeding. Was that the Sammy Hager thing? I, I don't know. All yes. I remember was him talking about yeah. how she made him look kind of like a fool. Yeah, so Sammy Hager has so a good. show. Yeah, he has a show on called Access TV, on Access TV called Sammy Hagar's Road Trip. Yeah, I don't have that. I wish I had that. And it, um, it had Ann Will I mean, Nancy, well, it had Nancy Wilson right. and Jerry Can Cantrell on the show. And they They're did a jam good. session. And Jerry Cantrell made comment about that. About <laughs> she took him to school. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that was the same one. I saw that. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. And she said, he, you know, he said, you know, there's if if you know, people talk about a lot of. He made a comment. That people talk about a lot of great guitar players, and Nancy Wilson's name doesn't doesn't rarely ever comes up. And he, you know, he said how much of a shame it was that because she is. Oh, she's a great guitar. You no, know, yeah. really, really good. And she's, um, she's smoking hot. Good, she's smoking hot. I was just gonna say she's smoking <laughs> hot. Dude. She was in Fast Times. <laughs> I don't. Uh, do you listen to the show every week, Amy? I don't know if you I do mean, or not. But, yeah. but we have some shameless 
plugs the decker <laughs> on the it's roof. Quite, it's quite all right. <laughs> Appar- apparently, <laughs> apparently, uh, Dennis is like on, in this. He must have watched Fast Times recently because that's been. I love that movie. Airport. That's one of my favorite movies. I went to the movie theater and paid to see it eight to- eight weeks in a row when we were in high school. <laughs> I love it. I could quote everything from it. I love it. Anyway. You dick. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So my lead singer was uh, Paul Stanley. You guys might have heard of him. He's yeah. in this little band that never made a dime. <laughs> Wicked um, Lester. And, <laughs> yeah, Wicked Lester called Wicked Lester. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now he's in a band called Soul Station. I don't know. He just well, doing what I don't wants like to. that at all. I yeah, it's okay. It's I don't fine. get it. Sorry. Whatever he wants to do. Um, I pick Paul just because I think Paul um, has always been a really good lead singer, and I think he's always been a great front man. He has a presence, and um, he has a direction of a you know he he does have that ability to get the band to do and go in a direction. Now, I, it'd be interesting to see him in a different band mm-hmm. uh, where he doesn't have to be the person that's leading every bit of it, and that might be a whole personality thing that doesn't work, but. Um, I don't think it'll work, honestly. From a frontman perspective, I think he's phenomenal. I think he's great. I like him. Yeah. Your turn, Amy. Okay. Uh, for uh, my vocalist, um, I picked Matt Barlow, uh, who was the singer for Iced Earth for many, many, many years. Um, I think Matt is probably, in my opinion, the most underrated singer uh, as far as his vocal ability in in, in the rock world um he, he's like the mariah carey of dudes <laughs> <laughs> wow I, I i mean seriously You'd be like one his, thank you somebody, <laughs> did, <laughs> somebody did like some kind of test on his vocal range i don't know it's like octaves or whatever but the guy can he can go all over the place and he just sounds good. I mean, he's not a screamer. He's very uh, symphonic, m- melodic when, when he's singing. He actually sings and um, is awesome. I that, That's what got me started listening to Iced Earth because I, I love the way he sang. And then he uh, ended up uh, quitting that and uh, became a police officer. And they had a thing on... On the internet, he sang national anthems and stuff like that. It sounded good when he was singing it, but now he's with a new band, uh, Ashes of Aries or something like that. But anyway, um, he's just phenomenal. Love him. Love him. Uh, I like his sound. He can get, you know, deep and growly when he needs to, and he can also, you know, hit those notes like freaking Mariah. help used to. I mean, it's just... It, cool. it, yeah, the, the the guy the guy's awesome, and he would just be great for any type of rock supergroup cover band. I think he could sing it all, so he he gets my props. I wish more people would uh, would know know about him. I don't think he got the recognition maybe in the spotlight that I thought he deserved. But yay, Matt Barlow! <laughs> I'm gonna actually have to look a little Iced Earth trivia. Um, the drummer or guitar player, I can't remember which one, lives here in Columbus or used to live in Columbus. Yes. He lived close to a friend of mine. Now, I think it was a neighbor, actually. I think it's the, um, the guitar player that uh, that started Iced Earth. Uh, yeah. Sh- uh, Schaefer, uh, I forget yeah. his first yep. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we would see us, we would see a tour bus here <laughs> occasionally. It's like, um, that's kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't mind but, uh, the tour bus outside my house. Kind of weird. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of cool. That's cool. You picked some good stuff. I mean, that's. Just, I, I mean, that was. Just, some of it's just kind of out there and and different. That's cool. It's just different, you know, and I, and I like some of the heavier stuff, but I mean, I, I, for every, you know, for every, uh, person I picked, I thought of three others that I could pick in a classic rock band or, you know, but I just thought I'd, I'd stick with the, the heavy metal and go for it. But, uh, yeah, gosh, there's so many good people out there. Unfortunately, some of them aren't living anymore, but, right. you know, yeah. I just, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, awesome. Real quick. I'm going to just, it's just going to take just two minutes. I put together the shitty group, and <laughs> this is the fact of I thought about it. And I go, they, you and my, who else? No. My 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 criteria was they had to be great. In like their, they, do. <laughs> they had to be great at what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying you can't play a cowbell. 
<laughs> but More I wanted this group to be one that it basically would implode within three minutes of everybody getting in the same room, that the egos would just beat each other to death. Guns and Roses. So, yeah, and, and, and we were joking. Ages of rock. Well, <laughs> we were joking about this earlier. You know, just get just get a kiss for Union back together, and it'd be probably be the yeah. same thing. But anyway, real quick, uh, singer wise, I and I had multiple people, but the first one <laughs> guy I could think of was Jeff Tate. Yeah, you know, that's right. Jeff Tate is an excellent singer, but the dude, you know, he'll what he spits in people's faces and what those other things he does. And we're going to we'll have his wife be the manager because I'm she's real good at that. Well, he did tell the audience at Rocklahoma that they suck. I seen that. I seen that. I was there. <laughs> oh, you were there. I was I like, what a video. dick. That must be a Tate thing. Were you not clapping loud enough? What's going on? Well, they were playing. You know, they started out with a couple of Queen's Rite songs that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And then they went into stuff off of the American Soldier album. Oh, fuck that. And yep. the one after that, and the one right before that, and that ain't Jet City Woman. That ain't what we want to hear. And right. nobody was clapping or applauding, and he was like, you guys suck. <laughs> and then he went into Jet City Woman and played Empire and all of the rest yeah. of the crap people know. And the crowd was great after that. Wow. I was like, well, maybe we're not I the ones not that... clap for sure then. Yeah. <laughs> That happened in Evansville with uh, we got berated by the guy from Godsmack, Sully, and he given us all kinds of shit about we weren't standing up, we weren't clapping. And I'm like thinking, okay, you just had this. You were the fourth band on the bill. You were the end of the night. You had Seether on right before. You know, I'm about ready to stick an ice pick in my forehead because I just seen Seether. I'm so depressed at that point. <laughs> then you guys come out, and I'm like going, I'm tired. I'm 50 years. Old. I'm gonna sit down. Fuck you. You know. And he's like, you guys work all week you, you need to be standing up i can't believe you people are sitting down i'm like fuck you i'm sitting down <laughs> if you were some I'm cowboy boots big fella we'd have been standing you know i paid my money <laughs> whatever the hell i want and i guarantee you i won't be paying for another godsmack concert you know screw you um anyway real quick lead guitar ian bay momstein you know there you go i mean that dude you ain't gonna get along he doesn't with play in bands well he is in this one it, it, but it's gonna implode in three minutes anyway uh, his 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 side guitar player or working next to him is one of two. It's either going to be Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> Imagine them two together; they would no. kill each other. Or Ted Nugent. <laughs> him and Ted. He's like, well, I can't understand you. You're not American. You know, get out of here. Bass player, you're going to have Gene Simmons. You know, Gene's just going to, you know, he's going to throw his little two cents in. And then on drums, you got. Bobby right, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! Slow down. What? You you think? That Gene's, Gene's got an ego. ego would be bad in a super group. Yes, <laughs> I think he would try to like run it as a business and everybody else. <laughs> oh, it would be terrible. Well, now he was in that super group with. Uh, oh my God, Scott, uh, Scott Eater that went on VH1, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm hoping that I'm hoping oh, that Gene back, Simmons but... did. Uh, I, they went to. Gosh, they did some shows in Brazil. Oh, maybe oh yeah, I think. they did that. I'm yeah, gonna have because he he tried to do the revenge yeah. look again. Yeah, and it's but true. he was about a hundred pounds heavier. <laughs> <laughs> it did not. Work. I don't think. I don't think. I think if Gene wanted to do it, I think he'd, I would. I don't think it'd be too bad. But the thing is, you'd have Eddie, and he'd probably be back on either alcohol or drugs. You know what I'm saying? And it, yeah, no, it, I don't. I don't disagree. I'm just saying I don't. I, I think he, I think G might be okay. And I don't think who else is in the group. <laughs> and then him and well, see him, him and Ted. See if you had him and Ted in the group. That I'd love to see him and Ted on. I'd love to see him and Ted on Fox News. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now the I'd drums like I had. I had, trouble, I had trouble with drums finding somebody. The only thing I could think of Bobby Blotzer. You know, Bobby Blotzer. <laughs> you know, that's all. I came up with him because that's, he's just that the, is perfect. You had two but, choices. You had Matt. You had it, Matt Sorum or Bobby Blotzer. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna go. I wasn't gonna go Matt Sorum. I was gonna go with uh, the original Matt, one that had the stroke. Stephen uh, Adler. Stephen Adler, because he can't stay straight long enough to for, <laughs> do a concert. But Bobby Blotzer's always getting in trouble. The other one that I thought of, Sully actually plays drums because he played double drums at that concert that okay. night. Yeah. So I thought that prick put him on drums. <laughs> 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 I mean. That's a perfect shit group. I mean, that that thing oh, went. Somebody's gonna be throwing drumsticks and. Oh, I I watch that. I, if they had that on a TV show, I'd watch that shit every week. Now you guys realize that when Peter Chris watches this, we never brought him up. He's gonna be mad. No, we did. We said if he would reunite with Kiss, it'd be a, the shit group. Oh. <laughs> 
No, but I can't add him in there because remember I said they have to be able to be good musicians. Be able to play. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> not a, a not a. That's a joke. Uh, you know, a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine, um, texted me and said when I posted that I posted a picture of uh, Paul Stanley's solo album that I listened to on Facebook, oh, I and see um, that. <laughs> and he uh, um, he he. He responded to that and said, you know, I had all of those and my favorite one was Peter Chris. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> You're the only one in the world. Peter Chris doesn't <laughs> even like I me. I know the Peter only Chris. one in the world. <laughs> I don't want to make a statement here, too, especially on the internet garbage. page. When we, make, I mean, when we talk about stuff like that, we are joking most of the time. And most I mean, of we, the time. We love Kiss. My 500-pound joke about Chris was funny. I mean, and I tell you what. I don't. I'll argue that all day. You look at some of these pictures of them now. I am not far off. <laughs> well, you know, four Ace guys that weigh one hundred got a good three. Four were, guys that weigh one hundred and twenty-five pounds is five hundred pounds. Right. So, you know, whoever got all butt hurt over that. Is, no, I said that they were. This was five hundred pounds ago. But those pictures of those oh. pre-magazine pictures, you see how little they were. They were. They, they were hell, Ace was that a was stick a at that ago. point. Yeah. Ace is not yeah. a stick. That was a long. That was a long, long time <laughs> that was ago. A long time ago. Ace is yeah. a log. <laughs> He's not a stick no more. <laughs> He's a redwood. <laughs> yeah, Axel A X E L is looks the yeah. same way. Now. Did you see that one? I saw Bill? it. Bill, you know, Ac or not Bill, but uh, Alan. You know, I think you could put Axel. You know, if you think about other, you know, other guys that could go in a super group that would, you know, George Lynch is somebody I don't think gets right. plays well with others. Axel Rose, I don't think is somebody that plays well with others. And honestly, I think this GNR thing is just a, is just a implosion oh, waiting to happen. Waiting to happen. It's a matter of days, not months. <laughs> there again, Axel was going to be my. He was the first guy I thought about in the shit group. But there again, I don't think he's that good of a singer. Oh, I don't think he's a very good singer. That's, why I, went with, that's why I went with Jeff Tate, because he's got the shitty attitude, but he's got a better voice. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, right. GNR is going to be terrible. Are we there? Are we there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what we usually we usually do this before we get into our discussions, but right. this time we're going to do it after because we all forgot about it. What kind of new music do you have you been listening to, Amy? Gosh, you know, to be honest, not a whole lot. I uh, I listened a little bit to the uh, Inglorious and and Dead Daisies after I talked to you or not talked to you guys, but listened to you guys on your podcast. But there hasn't been a whole lot of new rock music that I'm just mm -hmm. thrilled at. I, I I just don't. Every once in a while, I get a song every now and then. It's like, hey, but most of the stuff I get is still maybe new songs, but from bands that have been around, just like the stuff I'm digging right now is the new Anthrax album. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got that in my, you know, and I'm just turning on my iPod and, you know, you seen in that the video for that new, that new Anthrax That's one? creepy. I would, you that know, I wish really I could... weird, weird video. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I saw it and I wanted to unsee it, but I, <laughs> but I couldn't. The music's really good. I like the music to it, but that video yeah, makes I... no sense. It's just, it's just a bunch of, grotesque people getting tortured i mean it's exactly. really exactly i i could have done i could have done without the video and i i understand what they were saying scotty Ann had a blurb in there about i guess the whole backing of that song you know uh is the the on eagle's blood or something whatever the name of that song is but uh blood eagle wings or something like that but he said it was you know kind of like in in talking about all the uh, massacres that went on different countries yeah, medieval different Right. Yeah, that, that made these cities, you know, that went on in 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 the Italy's and France and London and all this stuff. And I and I understand that, but I could have I could have done without those really... images on that on that video. But I tell you, so the 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 two songs that from that album that I really 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 like are uh, all of them thieves and breathing lightning. I think those things that are lightning some... song is really good. I, I mean, like that. Those lot. two are some of the best songs that they have ever recorded, flat out. They they, they, uh, I think it was Scott again that said some. He was quoted saying he thinks this album's some of their best, if not their best work. And and I've got to agree with him. I mean, I I've never been an Anthrax fan to the same levels I have been Metallica or Sabbath or somebody else. But um, man, this new album they they hit it out of the park with this one. I got <laughs> is I I like it. Sorry. No, are you laughing at you? No, I just laughing because I was like you said like you know Scott said that this is you know one of the best albums. I'm like going. 
You ever heard of somebody come out and say, we just had a like, 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 <laughs> radio album come out and they go like, man, it's really a turd, but we're hoping people like it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah. No, I just, I mean, I just think. You kind of threw it together, but we're just hoping it good. I don't think it's as thrashy as their other albums. It's so. actually very melodic. I like it. It, it is. Like it, see, that's more, at my, that's more at my alley. And you get some people that, you know, they're like, oh, that's not Anthrax. You know, Anthrax is back when, you know, they were doing mm-hmm. Cotton Mosh and, you know, and, all, and I understand that. And that's all great, too. But doing something different is kind of cool. And I, and I think they did a really good job at doing something right. different, but yet still being anthrax at the same time and with joey belladonna i mean i'm glad he's doing the you know, we saw him and you you and i went to the concert we took you know yeah. our respectable uh others, others but we went <laughs> but we all went to that concert and uh you know and hell it anthrax was that's the only one i really wanted to see they were good yeah whole beat was just really good but we're actually we're getting ready to go to concert here what when is that may or yeah may, may third five finger death punch yeah five finger death punch yeah. i have you know, to work yeah you know, <laughs> <we're, laughs> Sorry. We're gonna be there. <laughs> I'm not driving there for one song. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I, I, I only want to hear one song. <laughs> I don't Kelly, care. So. Kelly texted me on the way to a gig the other night. She's like, "You guys need to do this song in your band." And I looked at it, and it's a song that I, I had seen back a while back, and I think that uh, it was brought up at one other point. But the Struts, you ever heard of those guys? They got a song called "Kiss This." That's the one that Kelly was wanting us to try to play. But the dude sounds like Freddie Mercury. I mean, he's got that sound, and he kind of has a look too, almost like a early when when Freddie had that kind of long, kind of you know bobbed off, kind of longer hair, and he's like a younger version of, of Freddie Mercury. But check out the Struts; they're, they're pretty decent. I, I think Mitch, I think Mitch brought it up actually. I think that's one of the ones he talked about. Yeah. I listened to the new Six AM song Rise. Yeah, oh. I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all right. Yeah, it was. I'm not a big 6 a.m. fan, you know, but, I mean, you can listen to it and you know what 6 a.m. Yeah. I like their guitar. Who's that guitar player they got? DJ Ashba. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. dude's really good. He's I really like good. Stars. That was a good song. Yeah. Yeah. But and this is okay. Yeah, I downloaded that, too. I was looking at what – I, I downloaded some new music this I week. Like so. So. I actually downloaded some uh, – something that, that, uh, that Dennis will probably like, which is um, – What's that? Uh, psst, a, at least a new song off the new Rick Springfield album. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. It's called, uh, the album's called uh, something about rocket science. I like Rick Springfield. Yeah, it's called rocket science. And that the song, <laughs> the first song on it's called light up this party or light this party up. It's really pretty good. Huh, and it's, well, it doesn't really sound like him. So it's, you know, not that that's a bad thing, but, and then um, I downloaded a new song by a band called Savage Blade. Hmm, never heard of that. And it was really kind of different. It was free. I downloaded it from the library. Right. Shameless plug for the library, public library. Freegal. There you go. Thank you. Freegal. <laughs> Love that Freegal. Because you can download stuff and you get it and you listen to it and you kind of go, that's garbage. <laughs> you just save me some money. <laughs> so I'm listening to it and I'm like, I think it's over and it's not over. The song is like almost seven minutes. Hmm. So now it's gone. <laughs> I do not have time for a seven minutes long. No, like, no. it's, <laughs> it's got to be really good. Seven minutes. <laughs> it's <laughs> listen it, to a long song like that. It ain't free bird. <laughs> it ain't free bird. It, it, a, I gotta go take a shit song. <laughs> it's a good song. It's a good song, but it needs to end. I mean, yeah. it, when I thought it was over, I was like, "Oh, this that wasn't too bad." What what the hell is going on? <laughs> They're keep yeah. stop it. <laughs> All right, fellas, you guys about ready to wrap it up. I think, wrap. Amy, we sure appreciate you coming on tonight. Yeah, like thanks said, for having uh, me. I told, I've told Bill and Alan about you quite a bit, and I was like, she's a plethora yeah, of music, music nonsense. So. <laughs> yeah, nonsense. That's what he funny. said about you wasn't, wasn't true, <laughs> apparently. He said you were hideous, had one eye in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. Oh, like I said, I've known Amy for a long time, and, and uh, she's a hell of a musician, and she's fun to talk to, and like I said, we're be going to concerts here soon. Woo. That's right. That's <laughs> and right. she listens to our show every week. So I there you go. You. She's I our know. best listener. There That's you awesome. go. Hey, I want to give a shout out real quick to another listener. Can I do that? Yeah. Sure. Is that illegal? That's legal. That part of our contract. Nah. Yeah. Hey, Billy Hardaway is a guy from Nashville. Um, and he's been um, giving us some feedback, and uh, oh. which is kind of cool. I really appreciate right. it. Um, he emailed oh, yeah, me definitely. Said, said something about, hey, you dudes need to do some homework. 
which was funny. I thought it was funny. He was just busting my chops. But um, it was really good feedback, and um, it just cool. seems like a pretty cool guy. So I um, just want to say a shout-out, man. Thanks for the, the hey. heads-up, and we appreciate it. So you mean when I say, you know, that guy from that band that played that song? That's yeah, not- he knows. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't figure out why the hell you don't. <laughs> I almost did that tonight thinking of Matt Sorum because we were talking about the drummers. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to say that guy that nobody likes. It's a drummer that plays in every band that just appears and everybody goes, what the hell is he doing? And then I'm like, well, okay, Matt Sorum. Sorum. <laughs> awesome. Take us Pleasure. out of here, Alan. All Get right. us out, man. Till next week, y'all visit agesofrock.com and click the like buttons on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and all of that good stuff. Peace out. See ya. <laughs>